Hi, Lori. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, good. You're still in your office. Yeah, I teach until 4.45, so I was oh, like, really? I may as well stay here and do yeah. this meeting and then head home. <laughs> You must have already gotten home. That's nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got back about uh, 45 minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the reason why I usually work from home on Wednesdays is I'm uh, like, I'm here so late on. Right. Late. I know people have jobs that work much later than I do. For, for us academics. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I can't possibly work till five. <laughs> yeah. um, Hi, Brian. Jeremy, I don't know you as well, but hello. <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? Hi, Brian. Hi, just kind of new here, so makes sense you wouldn't know me too well. <laughs> well, I'm sometimes in and out, so I used to teach in last semester in evening class, so I couldn't make it on Thursdays, but here we are. <laughs> I always remember on Friday that the meeting was on Thursday. You're like, oh. <laughs> I missed it again, man. Oh. Brian, if you have the window open, it must be a lot warmer where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice and cozy here on the <laughs> West Coast. <laughs> One of my favorite backgrounds, though. Yeah, it is a good one. It's fun with the window, like the stuff blowing, because it makes it look more realistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I had never seen one that, 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 uh, where stuff moves. Where stuff moves? Yeah. Yeah. If you get video files, which I found a website that you can do all sorts of different video files. But, uh, you know, we can go to Kansas and. Oh, wow. We've got tornadoes back there. Does the tornado move too? <laughs> yeah, the tornado moves. Yeah. We've You're got, like, nothing to see here, just a tornado coming behind me. <laughs> yeah, just a tornado behind me. We're good. Let's keep going. Well, ocean waves at night. Oh, fun. <laughs> Water falling on my head. <laughs> And I died, and I'm in heaven now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, Brian. I'm glad you remember that the meeting was on Thursday. Yeah, this was enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> you should join us every month. <laughs> yeah, we got some fun ones. Yeah. Hang out with the office. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so anyway. So fun. I had forgotten about this one, me sitting in a kayak. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, don't dump the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, anyway. CP, is that Clark Pixton? Yes, I'm on my phone. Hi, Clark. Hello. Oh, yeah, I can put my video on here. Oh, there you are. Are you in a car? <laughs> yeah, I'm busted. <laughs> My daughter's a dance practice. Uh, okay. <laughs> and Jay, I won't say I won't say what kind of vehicle I'm in either. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that Kira? Yeah. Yeah. It's a full oh, you're in a you're in a Kia because you're Kira. I'm in a Kia. <laughs> and Jake. Oh, we no. have exchanged lots of uh messages, but I don't think I've ever seen your face. So if... Oh yeah, I usually uh I've got my, my home desk set up and my laptop is behind oh, behind okay. my monitor. But I can, I can, I'll pull out the webcam in just a second. Okay, no, 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 I don't <laughs> want to cause trouble, but. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, uh, 
I put a lot of effort into the whole webcam thing early on in the pandemic. Right. But it's, uh, I think after a year or two, I, I kind of started slipping. Mm -hmm. So. That's the sad part. A year or two into the pandemic is. <laughs> <laughs> Is where we're at now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that, and that's coming from a public health professor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're halfway there. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, no. Just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just being silly. <laughs> Who invited her to this meeting? <laughs> uh. Hello, Austin. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Good. 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 Whose phone? I don't know who that is. We, we don't want to have any um, secret people recording us. It's Christine. Austin, uh, I like your background. You're safe. Oh, okay. All right. We won't kick yeah. you out. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good background. We were worried okay. that what Austin, what's that organization? The cars for Provo or something? Yes, drive in Provo. Drive in uh, Provo. That, we we were worried Provo. that Christine was a spy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they don't they don't have as much support as we do. <laughs> Not even close. Well, I mean, if you count how many people only drive in don't yeah. walk around and yeah it's actually a pretty big club <laughs> sounds like a really boring group of people <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's an expensive club to be into yeah okay not well very, let's not very healthy either no not not healthy no <laughs> well let's get started let's do a quick round of introductions i'll call out your name we've got aaron here yeah, I'm the uh, director of operations for Bike Walk Provo. Thanks, Aaron. I'm Austin. I'm the executive director of Bike Walk Provo. We've got Lori. I'm Lori Spruance. I uh, help with grants in the organization and also represent the BYU Bicycle Committee now. Nice. Glad you got on that. Finally, after like six months, they finally <laughs> invited me. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Okay, Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, I don't know what I am today. I'm a. I guess today I'm I'm a cyclist who can't ride. So, <laughs> but go bikes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, Stan. Stan Morris, uh, Bike Walk Provo Stories. Thank you, Chelsea. Hey, I'm Chelsea. I'm just, I'm the communications director. I just moved into this role. Hello. Yes, this is very exciting. So Chelsea has led up our service projects for the past at least year, maybe year and a half. And um, there will be some shifting around. And in like two weeks, I will tell you exactly what's going on organizationally. But uh, Chelsea is taking over the communications director role for Christine. So. Fantastic. We're happy to have her there. Okay, Clark. Clark Bixton, Director of Data and Research. Thank you, Rob. Rob Slater, um, just happy to be here. I don't know what my role is. You tell me. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Supporter. And we've got double Robs here. Oh, the other Rob. Sorry. No, no you're good. Either one. Yeah, Rob Hunter, Provo City Engineering. Okay, thanks, yes. Okay, Jake. Hey, I'm Jake Dustin. Uh, I think I'm the new service coordinator, if yes. I remember right. Um, and yeah, officially also this week, the uh, official bike mechanic of Qualtrics. So that was kind of fun. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, Jeremy. Uh, I'm Jeremy. Uh, there's, I'm just kind of new sitting in. 
Cool. Thanks for joining us, Jeremy. Okay, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine Branson, um, former communications director, I guess, of Pycox, and still helping with the communications team. Yes. Okay, then we've got Kira. <clears throat> hey, uh, it's Kira. I am the director of Provo Bicycle Collective. Thanks, Kira and Dakota. Yeah, I'm Dakota. I'm, I'm just on the board. I also work for Utah County Health Department. Great. Thank you for joining us, Dakota. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is, is quick announcements. So the first announcement that it's an event that we want to invite everybody to. In Salt Lake City, there's a similar group to ours, Sweet Streets SLC, that started up in, I think, 2020. And uh, it's a great group of people who do have similar minds as us. And they have invited us to go on a tour of Salt Lake City's active transportation infrastructure with them. And that's going to be this Saturday. We are taking the front runner up, and it's free for this whole month. Remember, all UTA services are free for this month. So we're meeting at the front runner station for the 7.53 a.m. train. So get there at 7.45. And the tour will start in Salt Lake City at 9 o'clock. And we'll ride for about an hour and a half and see things uh, up to two hours. And then hit the 11 o'clock train back, be home at 12 noon. So that's the plan, basically. You know, we'll be gone from 8 a.m. to 12, and it'll be a really good learning experience and cool to see everything that's going on there. And then also good networking and um, maybe make some friends along the way. So I definitely invite everybody to come to that. I think it's going to be a really fun time. And then... Um, I just have one other announcement and that's the reminder of UTA's fair free month in February. You know, take advantage of that. Take that trip to Sundance or, uh, you know, ride the front row to Ogden. Ogden's got a really cool downtown. So if you have some free time, you want to do a weekend trip or just go check something out. It's a great time to do that. Does anybody else have quick announcements? Austin, you think Saturday that is on bikes or walking? Yes, good question. It's on bikes. Everybody should bring their own bikes. We can cover a lot more ground by bike. Yeah. Scooters are welcome too, right? Yeah, scooters are fine too. Yeah. What you know, whatever goes 10-ish miles per hour. I don't know if this is the time for me to pop in with an announcement relative to the community meeting. Yes. Okay, so I'll post this on the Slack as well, but um, there's been emails circulating in my community relative to bike lanes um, on Canyon Road. And at least the emails that I have seen so far are relative to not wanting bike lanes on Canyon Road. So it'd be awesome if some folks from this group, myself will be there included, but others are welcome to come um, advocate for getting those bike lanes in. So it's on February 9th at the fire station on Canyon Road at 630. And then I'll also plug into the Slack channel. And in the comments right now, I'll put the Zoom link and information there. Um, so it'd be awesome if we could have some active transportation support for getting some bike lanes there. Um, anyway, I'll plug that in. Also, if I may um, add, uh, Lori, I've been working with Lori and my brother Grant, who also lives in Northeast Provo, uh, to rally uh, folks up there uh, to show up. But if uh, you know folks that we don't know, um, please invite them uh, to, to show up. Uh, the more the merrier. We need to turn out a crowd. And, um, you know, we want people from all over Provo to show up. Um, but we particularly want people um, who live in those Northeast neighborhoods to, to show up. One other thought with that, Aaron and I were out walking uh, earlier this week, noticed a roadie group 
If anybody has access to the roadie groups, I know those guys ride that all summer long. If we could get a group of them to turn out to say, look, we, we need that space and we ride often, I think that'll be a big help. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody know any roadie groups, you know, <laughs> informal or formal? Yeah, the, the Veo Club is a big group. Those are, that's usually who you're seeing on Saturday mornings. And I'm a member of that group, so I'll, I'll definitely put the word out. Okay, thank awesome. you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Okay, any other quick announcements? Okay, I'll just turn everyone's attention to the, in the chat. Lori put the um, Zoom link for that Canyon Road meeting. I don't think we necessarily want um, the familiar faces there that don't live in the Northeast. Mostly it's like if you live in that area or nearby that area or you ride that road a lot, then you should be showing up. And this is something that's on the bike master plan. The city has committed to it, you know, almost a decade ago. And it would be it would be a shame to see it not happen um, with this restriping opportunity because that only happens every so often, uh, the restriping. OK, well, um, can I add got... one more announcement? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, bike committee from BYU, they are doing just something maybe to put on our own events calendar page or whatever. They are doing a bike event on the March 20, 26th um, called the Cougar Cruise. And so they're going to be, I'm trying to read through, they just sent this uh, the other day. So really just trying to promote camp bike biking and whatnot in and around campus. So that's something we might just want on our radar um, that that's happening here on campus on the 26th. Okay, cool. Okay, let's move on to uh, agenda items. And I'm gonna ask either Aaron or Christine, I have a um, plumbing issue to take care of. Would one of you guys be able to run the agenda? Sure. Christine, you're on your phone, right? Maybe I'll yeah, do it. I'm, yeah, I'm in the car. So if you can do it, that okay. would be better. I will do okay, it. Look, okay, Aaron, I am putting the agenda in the chat right now. Okay, you can just that, that, thank you. Follow that. Okay, thanks. I'll listen along, but I have to go remove a toilet. <laughs> All right, good luck. <laughs> okay, see so ya. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, first up is Clark uh, Pixton, our Director of uh, Data and Research. Clark, take it away. And I've shared, enabled sharing, so if you'd like to do that. Awesome. And th there's two Clarks. What's going on? I'm on my phone and my laptop. <laughs> Taking over. Uh, okay, let me share a screen here. So I gave a similar presentation to TMAC in December, uh, and then this one was scheduled for January and we bumped it because we had a lot of great uh, agenda items last month. Um, but uh, thanks again to all those of you who are here and helped in back in September when we did our uh, bike and pedestrian counts. Uh, it was a great experience. We had an awesome turnout and I wanna share with you um, the results and I'll just spend a minute or two on some uh, some setup for the folks that didn't get a chance to attend so that we were all on the same page. Um, so this was started in 2019 by Austin. We did not conduct any counts in 2020 because of COVID-19, but in 2021, we were back out on the streets counting and we anticipate doing this um, on a yearly basis going forward uh, as we start to, and, and then um, we'll have ongoing talks as the city continues to put in um, both traffic cameras that sense bike, uh, bike counts as well as uh, cameras on the sidewalk that are kind of movable. So uh, this is the, an exciting start to what will hopefully ramp up to be a good uh, counting program for the bike and pedestrians in the city to go along with the well-established practice of counting uh, cars that have had that's happened you know, for a long time with the strips on the road. So exciting. Um, we're using a national methodology. Um, what we had one to two counters at uh, 13 locations for about two hours in mid-September, repeated twice. And then uh, we used um, some 
again, some nationally determined uh, extrapolation factors to get a rough cut count of, of what we think is happening in terms of yearly volume uh, at each of these locations. And I will, here's the list of locations. You can glance at it for a sec. I'm gonna show you on a map in just a minute here. Um, but these are the, in words, the, the locations that we hit. Um, targeting for now, because we have limited uh, resources, the most active uh, transportation areas of the city. Um, so let me uh, switch over into my data here. And give me just a sec. This one. All right. So I showed you the locations on uh, text. This is the, the map view. So we had a bunch right around BYU and in the, in the um, this central area, we had a couple on Center Street. We picked up one down by the, uh, the Provo Central Station uh, and then some up to the north and, and east of BYU as well. Um, I will give you uh, a few different snapshots of the data. So first here is uh, just one station on Center, Center Street. Um, this is again, the numbers here are extrapolations based on um, calculated factors from the National Bike and Pedestrian Documentation Project. Uh, more future work is to um, kind of z z zoom in on Provo and, and, and make this even better. But for now we're, we're thinking uh, over a million pedestrians are, are passing this spot where we counted on Center Street. You can see um, bikes and scooters for now have, have a lot less traffic, which is expected, especially in a place like Center Street where the bike infrastructure is not great. Um, although we're really excited at what Rob and, and uh, folks in the city are, are doing to look at that area. Um, here is the 200 East Bikeway, you can see uh, Lots of pedestrians as well, 700,000. Lots more bikes because this is a, a corridor that's set up for, for bike traffic. So just a couple of representative breakdowns of how much uh, traffic we've got uh, at a couple of the, the sites. I'll give you more um, kind of general overview uh, visualizations in a sec. Went back to the, the map. Um, you can see here kind of uh, where the, the hot spots are in terms of traffic. So this was that 1.2 million down on Center Street. We've got a sizable amount there. Um, lots of folks use this Joaquin neighborhood area just south of, of campus. There's some really big uh, corridors there. We had a count out here on the river trail at Paul Rehm uh, Wilderness Park. Um, and I'll, I'll show this at the end, but that one is actually one of the ones of the, of, of, that was up from 2019. Um, so lots of uh, leisure traffic. Um, so this is actually, I should also say this is pedestrians. I'm going to, I'm going to flash up the labels for just a sec here. If you're interested in seeing on the map, uh, the extrapolated figures at each of these places. And then I'm going to pop over to the same map, but this time bikes and scooters. So less traffic overall for the bikes and scooters. Lots right here at the Southwest corner. And we also counted a lot of bike movements up in the Northeast of, of um, the campus as well, which we were, which was interesting. Uh, not something we expected, but lo lots and lots of uh, bike traffic up there. Uh, again, I'll show you labels in case you wanna get a rough feel for um, our estimated numbers yearly. Um, this data, by the way, I'll, I'll note, I'm happy to take questions, but this data is also coming um, to the to the bike walk Provo website uh, at a at a time in the near future, so that you can take a take a look and and check it out yourself. Um, good. So I'll just show a couple more kind of um, snapshots of the data. This is pedestrian volume, not on the map, but just with the bars. Um, lots on on Center Street and 700 North. The Rec Center crosswalk. Um, we have a lot of, of traffic around the rec center. It's just the particular crosswalk we chose. Uh, it was not, I think, a great um, 
indicator of, of the traffic around the rec center bike and, and pedestrian traffic. Uh, and so we may look at a better kind of line of demarcation next year, because I think this one in particular is, is a little inaccurate. Um, that's pedestrians, bikes. Um, again, you see this shift where we have these uh, northeast areas, uh, 900 East Heritage Halls, showing a lot of bike traffic and, and, uh, and at the, near the MTC. Uh, good. Let me see. And then e-scooter volume was was low, but uh, um, I think growing. Last thing I'll show you is comparing just a bunch of numbers. I apologize. There's a lot of numbers in this table here, but uh, if you want to look at one number, uh, check out this total down here in the right bottom corner. Uh, this is the overall percent change between our counts in 2019 and 2021. Um, we have a couple of guesses for why traffic is down. I mean, some of it I think is pretty um, uh, expected uh, due to the change in commuting patterns from COVID-19, which I think is a major shift in all modes of, uh, of transportation that we're still getting a handle on. Um, and so future work will be, I, I've not done this yet, but uh, we compare this to, I guess I, I did it informally, a lot of roads have the same um, pattern of, of decreased traffic, um, but around this same time, uh, but we can do a more formal analysis. Uh, there are some exceptions uh, here. I, again, this 255, I think, may be a small data issue, so I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in this number, but River Trail was up by 63%, uh, as well as the, the East uh, northeast part of campus, Heritage Halls area, um, and uh, a spot right by, uh, this is, I think this is one right by Brick Oven, Pizza, just west of there, uh, southwest of campus. Um, and that's what I've got in terms of, of data, data analysis so far. Again, I'll reiterate, this is coming for you to get your hands on uh, on the BikeWalk Provo website soon, as soon as we can formalize the visualizations and get it in, in web format. So thanks. Any any questions from anybody on this stuff? Any questions? So I don't I don't really have a question. Um, but as I mentioned when you pre presented the TMAC, uh, and I haven't been able to move on it with uh, besides Jared that you guys know because he attended a lot here. We've had. Um, we're, we've got a few hires that we need to that we need to do here in engineering, and so I haven't had the time to to spend on this that I'd like. But uh, but going forward, um, you know, the the city would like to to help out, and and it's you know as good for us to know as as it is for the bike walk committee to know um, what the patterns are um, for uh, get a better handle on on what the patterns are for. Uh, for cycling and, and scooters and everything. And so one of the ideas that I had thrown out there is that we could do data on a more regular basis. If we use, we've got cameras um, that have about a 48 hour charge um, that we can stick out. And then we've got a program that'll cycle through at a, at a pretty fast rate to where it doesn't take 48 hours then to, <laughs> to, uh, to view how many, uh, yeah. you know, cyclists there were within that time. So anyways, I'd like to get, together with you and and um set together a program to where we can we can do some of these counts more often and and kind of really hone in on the on the annual data yes rob uh i i remember that comment from last time and that's that's really exciting i'm going to put a note in my uh in my to-do list that we should get together and, and talk about that because i think yeah. that's promising Thank you. so we're we're doing uh we're uh should have people on board in a couple of the positions within a, a couple of weeks. And then we're, we're, we just closed up the, um, uh, the position for, uh, or the advertisement, I guess, for Jared's position. And they're going to be doing, um, interviews in a couple of weeks. So I would say maybe give me about a month and I'll have enough people on board to where we can really, <laughs> uh, be able to focus on here and it would be a good time to set up a meeting and, and go over it with a new guy. So, okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Uh, last thing I'll say is thanks one more time to everybody that came out and supported this. Um, as you all know, it's great to be out uh, part of the community. 
we had some, you know, some fun times together as counters. And I think it's also nice to just kind of sit and, and just watch what's happening in different, different parts of Provo. So uh, that, that, that part I think is nice as well. Um, but to Rob's point, if we can get, if we can get a lot more of this, I think it, it'll be really, really helpful for future planning and for informing decisions. So great. Thank you. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, Rob, just a, a question. I was in uh, Carmel, Indiana last summer and on the Manon Trail, they had a permanent counter with a display that showed people the number of pedestrians as well as the number of cyclists in real time for the day, the week, the month, and the year. Uh, the, the cool thing, I was there for a city planning uh, convention and uh, the number of people that were surprised how many had been there that day because they, as we were standing there uh, on the tour, one or two cyclists went by, but to see you know, that there had been 680 by two o'clock, that number really kind of helped change the, the narrative around it. Is it possible we could get something like that on some of these trails or have you, have you ever looked into something like that? Uh, we haven't looked into it. That's the uh, first time, at least that I can recall that somebody's brought that up, but that does sound very interesting and sounds like something that we could definitely get into. So let me look it up and, and see what we can find. Okay. I can send you some pictures I took of it. I'll have to track them down, but uh, it was a pretty cool little element. So yep. maybe by river woods or something. Yeah. There's, it, it was great for the non cycling people to see that, yeah, there are hundreds of cycles every day, even though you may only see one every two or three minutes, yep. it adds up. Yeah, I think it because we've had feedback of, of a similar nature of uh, the ones that don't like the, the restrictions on the access, especially off of Cougar Boulevard. It's like, why did we do this? There's nobody that ever goes down Cougar Boulevard and we definitely have counts that say otherwise. So yeah. it, it would that would be, be a great place then. Yeah, to put one out on Cougar would be awesome. Provo Forward Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think awesome. I think there's um, I think there's similar instrumentation on the Murdoch Canal Trail, at least by where we live. Um, and if you wanted to talk about just like uh, just like remote instrumentation for that kind of thing, that's what my dad's company does. So I can probably get you a deal on some stuff if you guys wanted it. So awesome! Nice. Sounds great. All right. Well, thanks again, Clark, for that great presentation and for uh, all your work on that and, and everybody for helping uh, make that possible by participating in the count. So let's go to Brian next. Um, and I'll let you introduce your, you know, your, your proposal. Um, so Brian, yeah. Brian's going to present to us a kind of a dry run. And so this is an opportunity for us to give feedback uh, to Brian because he's going to be presenting this to TMAC in a few weeks uh, and then probably to neighborhoods and, and other um, audiences uh, to build support for uh, making some temporary and hopefully some permanent changes to uh, Timpu Drive. Brian, take it away. Sounds great. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, yeah, this project has been on my mind for a few years, and uh, uh, the city has said that they're going to be resurfacing, doing a major renovation to Timpview Drive uh, this next year, and they've graciously given us an opportunity to demonstrate some mobility changes, some temporary changes to show the public what uh, Timpview Drive could be. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to kind of show the whole city what uh, different roads, different, what different uh, applications can be applied throughout the city. Uh, we were very surprised to hear, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, that uh, this is an installation that could be up for maybe a month. That, that is correct. I think we could pretty easily fit you a month after the snow has passed and, and uh, schedule things to where you guys could have something up here for about a month before we come back through to, to repave. To repave everything, wonderful. So Aaron and I have put together uh, kind of some general things we'd like to see. Uh, our goal here is to 
ask for all the possibilities and, and get what we can. Uh, uh, so today we're just kind of going through a draft of some of the ideas we thought would be great to demonstrate. If you have ideas, have a thoughts, uh, we'd love to hear them and, and we'll ask questions when we're done with this presentation, but definitely keep any ideas you may have and, and we'll get started. Uh, okay, so for those of you not familiar with Timview Drive, it is a 25 mile an hour street that is straight and wide and cars do not drive 25 miles an hour. Uh, other modes of traffic though, uh, the on-street parking is very few and far between except around Timpview and maybe on the north, uh, sorry, the south end for soccer games. Other than that, very few cars park on the street. Uh, there's a lot of fences and hedges in some areas where there's no driveways. It would be great for uh, parking buffered bike lanes. Uh, but it's just a very wide street. Uh, this intersection here in the upper picture, it's a stop sign. It gets ran a lot. Uh, people just, they get in that mode of flying down the road and they don't see that stop sign. There are four stop signs on Timview Drive. Uh, many of them are run often. The one near my house, I've shocked how many times I, I see people running that stop sign. Uh, but the big thing is hundreds of people use this street for exercise, kids walking to school, cycling, scooting, walking, jogging in the spring. I mean, on this particular day, it was like 20 degrees out. This guy in the picture was running. Several other people were out walking and running, even though it was cold. So it's a very multimodal street. Uh, I would say probably three to one people running and biking to cars parked on the street. Uh, there are four different schools the kids walk to, Timpview, Edgemont, Rock Canyon, and Centennial Middle School. So lots of kids. I bet we're pushing in a day. You may have a thousand pedestrians along this street in a day. So kind of the goals that we felt were important to ask, what are we targeting? Improve safety for kids walking, riding, and scooting to school. Uh, how can we also make the street safer for runners, joggers, cyclists, and other people exercising? Uh, how can we reduce the feeling of the speed of the road so motorists naturally drive slower? Uh, we did run into one of my neighbors who complained about the noise. Uh, he and his wife walk often on Timview, and they said it's hard to have a conversation because of the noise from the cars, usually the speeding ones. And this was something I noticed after Aaron and I walked on my way walking back to my house. There was several cars that went past very slowly. I suspect they were around the speed limit and they were very quiet. The other cars that were going very fast were obviously louder. So slowing cars down could make it a much quieter street. And then also how can we reduce the heat island effect, making the whole neighborhood more comfortable as well as adding some beauty because there are parts where it's just an ugly road. So we came across six potential principles to demonstrate. Uh, we're gonna go through each one real quickly here, but uh, if you have other ideas, love to hear uh, your thoughts as well. So demonstrating a roundabout at one of the four-way stops. Uh, we did this once before on uh, Third East. Like to come up with some way to, to demonstrate a roundabout. There's another intersection. This one, this intersection baffles me. This is uh, to the left of this intersection is one of the main accesses into Indian Hills. And yet this is just a two way stop. But there's so many cars that come both directions on the stop that a lot of people will stop at this intersection, even though there's not a stop sign. <laughs> I've been guilty of that. Uh, so to show a, a Dutch style intersection in this intersection, to, to help the traffic because it, it can be confusing. There's a lot of spaces on Timview Drive where the, there are very few driveways. The, the homes face other streets. In this particular instance, there's a small park. And as you can see with this minivan, there is a lot of right away here to flip the bike lanes closer to the sidewalks, push the cars out into the street so that we can slow the cars as well as protect the kids going to their, their schools. 
Also adding bulb outs. Uh, there are several intersections. This one particular intersection near Rock Canyon has some bulb outs. Well, there's two on the entire street. Uh, and looking at what a bulb out is, how we can make it really feel like the street is narrower. Uh, I feel like these ones don't quite do that. They do offer protection, but they they, they could go a little further. This was something I stumbled upon uh, in Santa Clara, Utah. Uh, it was something I'd always had in my head. I was thrilled when we got lost and found this looking for a, a youth group uh, to help calm their street. They put these islands in the parking areas. Uh, this can be either in this way they've got it set up here, or you move that planter out closer to the street and around the bike lanes behind them near the sidewalk. Uh, one anecdotal thing we found, somebody else was driving when we stumbled across these. And I looked over while we were driving through this area that had these islands and he was doing 32. It's a 35 mile an hour street. We got to the other end and I didn't say anything. We kept driving after the islands had ended. He sped back up to 42. We turned around about a half mile later. As we came back into this area, he naturally slowed back down again. And as we were pulling out of it, I said, how fast are you driving? And he looked down, he's like, oh, I'm going too slow and immediately hit the accelerator. <laughs> so they do work to help calm traffic. Uh, I think this is probably one of the, the really out there projects. I don't think we're gonna get this in this refinish. And this is probably gonna be one of the most difficult ones to demonstrate, but would really love to see something like this to help calm the traffic, especially where like this street, the on-street parking just isn't utilized to where we need it all. So to have that, those planters would really help to slow the traffic and beautify the neighborhood. And then just the oh, go ahead. Probably roll a bunch of potted plants into the area uh, to demonstrate. That's what we were hoping. If we can find some potted plants, uh, I was also thinking with the uh, Provo Powers tree uh, program, if we were to get landscape spikes, could we kind of nail those to the road? uh so they don't walk off uh then we'd need to keep them watered of course so we they would take a little more upkeep to keep those watered if we can demonstrate it i'm all for demonstrating that because i think that would help the most on this road uh so if anybody has some ideas on how we can keep those watered and get some plants down there that would be great and then lastly some crosswalk art to help really demonstrate there are crosswalks. I think most people just don't see them anymore. Uh, on my walk after uh, Aaron and I split, I noticed there was a crosswalk in mid-block crossing I had never noticed before. So to paint some of those so that they kind of stand out, I know there are some legal ramifications with that. Certain crosswalk standards as may or may not be possible in Utah. Uh, if it is possible, we'd love to do it uh, to to kind of highlight the crosswalks. This would also be a great opportunity to include the neighborhoods. We could do uh, art competitions with the schools to come up with designs for the crosswalks that may be permanent afterwards. Uh, but just another opportunity to kind of showcase pedestrian safety in the area. And so real quick, this was just some opportunities that Aaron and I pointed out. We are open to suggestions on this. If uh, anybody has an idea of where they would like to do some uh, different ideas, the again, the tree planters, we can do anywhere along here. Uh, we'll just need to pick a place and maybe coordinate it with the car buffered bike lanes. Uh, there is a spot, uh, it's actually right in front of this church right here, where the road narrows, you can kind of see it there. The parking is only six feet wide. And then the bike lane is five feet. There's not enough room to really do both. And so could we demonstrate some landscape buffered bike lanes in that area where cars shouldn't be parking anyway, because there just isn't room. Uh, so lots of opportunities. Uh, we're still in the planning stages. So these are just some suggestions. Yeah, Aaron. Ryan, just really quickly, if, 
if I may interject, just to yes. orient people. Uh, actually, Brian, can you do this? Can you explain? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. This is 2200 North right here. Uh, this is uh, Rock Canyon Elementary School. As you come further north, then it picks up here and keeps going north. These are the tennis courts at Timp View. Timp View is right here. And Edgemont Elementary is right here. Okay. So we'll obviously need some supplies. Uh, this was one question I had for Rob. Uh, to help us get as much paint as possible, would it be possible to get donations of latex paint that people have in their basement? Can we paint the street with latex? Or do you have other paints that we should use? Uh, since it's a longer term project, the cornstarch probably won't be the best paint to use. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to look and see specifically on latex paint, but there there is um, temporary paint. In fact, it's it's in uh, it's in Jared's old, old office. Um, that at least my recollection recollection was was fairly cheap, and it's it's temporary paint in terms of um, you can just power wash it off instead of having to grind it down. But it's not gonna it's not gonna come off. It, you know, in every rainstorm. So it's, it, it would be a good, I think a good uh, paint for a project like this. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, I had a little experience with paint as well. In Park City, we did just like the cheapest Home Depot uh, standard latex paint. And that lasted a few months. And uh, I think it's, it's getting all scraped off this winter. I guess so. Some of the stuff, really, the thing is too, is that it, some of the stuff is um, you're, you're showing up into areas that we're not going to do until um, at least next year when the um, when when the high school is is done with some of their construction. So I think right. we're going up to thirty two thirty. But but really, anything that goes into thirty two thirty, yeah, you could probably. It, it, really there's probably no reason for me to, to look at it uh in terms of what paint because we're going to be coming uh over in milling and overlay so right <laughs> um so you could yeah so you could you could use whatever the cheapest paint is you know as we as we go through and and kind of finalize um what you want to do um yeah just getting some black paint to paint over the existing lines and some white paint to to, to paint the the temporary and then we'll just come through and tear up everything anyway so okay. i don't think it I don't think it matters what paint, whatever the cheapest paint, because it'll be gone. Hey, Rob, Rob Hunter, what, what are the what's what are the budgeting constraints on this? I mean, do they have a dedicated budget for this road? Is there room for additional stuff like roundabouts or islands and things like that? Um, not with this project. So there are there are some, and I need to check and see. Um, uh, with the with the engineer that's over the project, what it is that we, we do have some funds. If it was really small stuff, we may be able to to fit it in. But a roundabout, for example, um, redoing a because you're redoing the corners and putting something in the middle to do to do it the way that we have done it um, in other places. I mean, you're talking five hundred thousand to a million dollars. Um, it's very <laughs> it's very expensive. Um, so I don't see it as something that that on on that scale that we'd be able to fit into this year's budget. But that doesn't mean if it's you know test, testing it out doesn't doesn't mean if if we don't have it in our budget to do this year, then we're never going to do it. It's it's uh, some of the smaller stuff we we may be able to fit in, but really it gives us an opportunity to to test out the the funding that or the the vast majority of the funding is is just redoing the the pavement and and it's a and it's a fun it's the it's the the, the street fee that we all pave for preservation of roadways um, in our monthly bill, right? And that is um, by law dedicated to the pavement. So the majority of the money is just to do the pavement, but if we, it gives us an opportunity to test things out to where we don't necessarily have to wait. Um, if things are popular and we can find some funding, um, we, can, we can do these, I guess it depends on what all we wanna do, how much it costs and, and then, you know, figuring out the, the funding from there. So it gives us an opportunity to test it. If it doesn't go in this year, it doesn't mean the opportunity is lost to, to do the permanent in the end. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, so that, that is, we are presenting to TMAC to see if we can put this on some future plans. Some of these things we're going to be providing. So. Yeah. And, it, and part of the reason for this year, and even as we kind of, cause we, we project in the, you know, in the future years, what, 
it is that we want to do. And <clears throat> we always try to keep some, um, some miscellaneous funds to where we can use in different things, but especially with how much is going on in Provo and how much we're trying to do, um, some of those things being, uh, you know, a lot of those things being uh, um, actually, if they're not specifically uh, active transportation, they, they've got an active transportation component. Um, there is so much that we are trying to get done right now that, you know, it's it's really tight to, to be able to do something here on Timview for active transportation may mean, I mean, the only, uh, the only funding <laughs> with all the, with all that we're trying to do, uh, it, it's, it's stealing from one project to, to do on another project. And so we'll see what we can do, you know, let's see, test them out. Let's see what we can do. And then I don't, anything big, I don't see happening this year. Um, and our budgets are tight enough to where we're, uh, we're trying to figure out how to create this additional room to where as things come up, we've, we've got room to, to add things in and not tell people, Hey, we can't do it for five years. Right. Um, but, uh, but we're, we're pretty tight with, with all the things that we're trying to get done. We're pretty tight for right now. Now, one thought on this, uh, when the road is refinished, uh, I was kind of thinking the other day, what, could go down without any excess cost. And the parking protected bike lanes was one because you got to paint stripes, which is right. just a matter of where. Uh, the crosswalk art, we were thinking to make that a community project anyway. And do you know legally, can we paint crosswalks or do they have to stay to meet the state standards or whatever? So the, the legality that comes into play as we talked more about it, because this came up as we, as we discussed with you guys, um, I don't know, several months ago, um, the potential of doing um, art in the intersections. Um, and it's less, it, really what it is, is, is the legality of, um, and I need to, it, we, we, we were just talking about it again today, actually, um, and figuring out, you know, if we could, what kind of controls or how we could do things from a policy standpoint. The problem is, especially where we don't have a policy right now for, for doing mm -hmm. art, the, the, the risk is, is without a policy, if we say you can go put art out there, we can't tell bike walk, you can do art that would be great art. And I'm, and I'm a hundred percent, you know, confident that you guys would do, you know, something that's good. What, and then tell somebody else, but you can't with something that's a lot more, you know, art that's a lot more controversial that nobody in the neighborhood wants. Um, and so I'm not saying no, you know, in this meeting, right. but I, I am saying this is a discussion that we're having and, and there's some outside of engineering, you know, more legality. Uh, what, what are we opening up here um, that we're trying to work through? Right, right. No, and, and that was one thought where I had, uh, or I was thinking if we did a competition with the schools, we could bring those designs to engineering first and say, yeah. which of these will not make this not look like a crosswalk. And then we'll let the community decide from there. But no, I see the, the, the issue there. So yeah. Excellent. So we'll, we'll, we'll bring it up and we'll push forward. I don't, you know, that one's like I said, we, we have been discussing and we're, we're trying to, figure out a way that we can do more art on the street and making sure that it's not, not that the city wants to have, you know, control of, you know, sure. too much control, but, but, bas but basically how can we do it without opening it up to where anybody can put whatever they want on there all the time. And suddenly we got a bunch of stuff that is just an eyesore or, or a, you know, con controversial all over the place. We do have Mickey Mouse that spontaneously popped up in our neighborhood <laughs> on a manhole that <laughs> looked like Mickey. <laughs> so, Aaron, you had a question. <laughs> oh, I, I, it was a, a comment. Um, I think we could also do uh, landscape protected bike lanes without the landscaping if we just use paint and pylons, for example. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and here's, here's one thing that I was going to throw out there. Um, is that I think some of these things, now the bigger stuff like roundabouts is gonna be too big and too outside of, of using this, but especially just some of the more landscaping type stuff. I, I think, I don't know if we could, I don't know if Timpview is gonna qualify for this, but 
this type of thing uh, on an, on another street, at least um, in in some areas of Provo, would be exactly the the type of thing that I think the CDBG grant would would be great for. Mm-hmm. Right. And that can be, I mean, CDBG grants can be several hundred thousand dollars. You can you can get some real, you know, nice stuff done. Timview, um, I don't know that that's. Uh, <laughs> A, a neighborhood that's going to be you know, going to fit the parameters of of a CDBG <laughs> grant, but uh, but uh, if we can test it out, you know, maybe maybe that shows, hey, this is great and people like it, and then we can say, okay, but uh, you know, a street over here, you know, anyways, it's an idea. Well, and that that Rob is one of my things. I I want to demonstrate here things here that we can't apply elsewhere, and yeah. I don't want this just to be for the Timpu neighborhood. I would love it if people from all over the city came to drive it to see the the options and if there's some way to advertise that out that we're doing these demonstrations as potentials for any street in provo we just happen to be doing it here where we're doing a refinishing so yeah yeah all the other stuff in terms of tests i don't i don't have it the only one that i have um that i that i feel like i need to see where you're talking about more because i haven't really looked into that was the was the dutch style intersection um in terms of my initial feedback like i said that the art in the crosswalk just because we were just talking about it today it's not engineering it's just a more like i said um policy wise i guess what what does that open us up to and then the dutch style let me take a look at that but i don't i don't see an issue with testing you know out of this entire presentation i i think we could we could test out a lot of these things are, the, are there um, other things you've seen that you'd like us to test that we haven't discussed? Is there other things you're talking about in the city that we could try? Um, well, I think you covered most of them. I mean, we've, we've talked about yeah. um, adding in, you know, do, doing different things to add in vegetation because that is just be, besides beautification um, does have a, a significant traffic calming effect. So I have driven down that street in Santa Clara. My, uh, mm. my wife's mom lives down in, in St. George. And so we've, we've driven down that street. I love that street. Um, yeah. So doing things like that, putting in roundabouts, um, roundabouts is a, is a, you know, a safe intersection design for all modes of transportation. We, we are definitely pro doing that. Um, and it's just the, the cost of, you know, sure how much it costs in terms of implementing it everywhere um biking uh, or the the uh the protected bike lanes especially i think they're in front of the church just like you're talking about either with planners or doing something to to push the the bikes back closer i don't think you know especially where you're talking about that's uh, six feet wide that's not really a typically the the standard is seven foot bare minimum in a residential area yeah. um so it's not really wide enough for parking i haven't ever seen anybody try to park there anyway so doing something right to, to push it further away from the travel lanes, I think would be helpful. So I, th- I think you've covered a lot of the things that, that we've discussed doing. Excellent. So, I, I was wondering with the planters, uh, I, I was thinking of how that could be implemented and what would be the cheapest. And the thought came to me to do like a six by 12 open top precast concrete culvert that's installed. So that the tree isn't planted in uh, road base. <laughs> Would that be something, I don't know if you've considered that, but just something that's set with a curb, but it's kind of a precast that's installed all at once, if that would help cut costs? and. Um, well, so we have, I, I, I don't know specifics yet. Okay. But, but we have talked about, really, we need, to, we need to look at more like what we do have on TempView. Um, on some of these things, it's a lot easier to, I think sometimes we have had the attitude of, of before we do anything, we're going to make sure that we've got all the money to do it exactly 100%, the, you know, full blown, the way we really want to have it done, but we could get a lot more done. If on some things like this, we could do things that still look really good. It's just not how we would, you know, what, what our typical Provo, this is, if we were building a brand new street, how we do it. Well, this isn't one, this isn't existing. So how can we get, you know, stuff done? So I, I don't know the, 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 the specifics yet, but yeah, there's, there's, there's ways that we can do things um, once it comes to the, the permanent that, uh, that is cheaper than, than, than what we see on, on brand new streets. Right. No, and, and that was something with, with, we just have three oh. minutes left. So, you know, okay. Yeah. So I guess on, on roundabouts, the, the main place I hear the most people would like it is in front of Timbio and Angemont. If we're, if we only have money for one, 
that I think is the best place for it because Timpu traffic will back all the way to Canyon mm -hmm. Road when the students are coming in the morning and backs halfway up the Quail Valley in the afternoon. Um, and then just a last comment, uh, the, on those tree planters, if there was any way to include it with the existing very narrow park strips so that the curb and gutter goes around it uh, so we can get water and, and you know the irrigation to it. And then it kind of makes it part of the homeowner maintains it like mm -hmm. the park strip is. That was just a, a last thought. If we're going to do it and do it right, that's the way I'd love to see it. But I know that requires the major changes. So anyway, uh, I appreciate your, your comments and looking forward to this. Uh, are we talking April, May? Uh, yeah, probably, probably April um, okay. will, will be the best time. Um, so con yeah, yeah, I mean, conceptually, as you're working through kind of final, and if you want to mm -hmm. send this presentation to me so I can talk about it with Gordon also. Okay. Um, and then we'll, we, we've got, yeah, um, you know, we plan to have you, you guys come and present um, at the next TMAC meeting, which is in what, two weeks? Is it coming up that fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, two weeks. So, yeah. so two, two quick things on, on this project. Um, one is in, on the bike walk program, we have talked about it being in maybe because of bike month and all of the mm -hmm. natural advertising and marketing that happens within, we get a really big audience. So if we want to pull a big volunteer base, May might be the better month, but yeah. we're really yeah. flexible on that. And then Brian and Rob, the... you guys should talk materials sometime and see. I know, Rob, you have some things we might be able to borrow. Yeah, it depends on how you guys want to do it. The stuff that I that we have in-house is is mostly I've got some some small plants that are, you know, fake plants that we use for uh for just the, the traffic circles. Um, and then we have panels and stuff, but if you're wanting to do more, you know, change the paint around, do that kind of stuff. Um, we don't have those as of right now. So it depends that, yeah, it depends on how you want to do it. I may have what you need. I may not have what you need, just we'll work through it. But yeah, um, to speak to your, to your first thing, Austin, let me, um, so it's, it's, it's about to go out to bid. So we do have some time, but let me, let me see all the work with the, the engineer that's over it look through the schedule of what we have and see if we could push it into um either the end of may or, or beginning of june if we can push it out that far to where we can give you may instead of just april so okay yeah one it thought we had talked on kickoff to bike month yeah. yeah we definitely want to do it when the kids are going to school so yeah. we can see it with that and the team view kids and all of that if we can so yeah okay thanks well um, Rob Hunter, do you have anything from Provo City that you want to bring to us in the last, you know, in two minutes or so? In 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine. One of the other things that we're going to be talking about is just kind of the, the next steps with, with TMAC um, at that meeting is the next steps on on uh, uh, Center Street. So we're going to be, we're bringing in a, um, a, a consultant to help us put together a concept of, of a couple of different options that we could do on Center Street for, I think, I think we've talked about it before, but uh, what we're going to what we're going to do this year what, what we've talked about there's a couple of policy type things that can make things easier to close down um center street not make it a, a burden as much when the uh, the downtown um area wants to do an event there so we're doing that but uh but we're going to test out um some things this year um and and several of the things that the tmac went and scored but we're going to we're going to test them out this year uh as we work towards funding for future years to actually put the the, the permanent into place but anyways we're going to be bringing kind of the next step to to team mm -hmm. here in a couple of weeks so that's probably the big item i think we've talked about um other projects oh one i guess uh for the last 30 seconds um aaron you asked about could we retake a look at because we hadn't been planning on adding bike lanes on um on columbia avenue um and so i have taken a look at it there's there's a part between grandview lane and 1700 north that because of the slope, it's kind of skinny. And so we're just, I'm still working through that, but we'll figure out something. So we'll have bike lanes, I think on the majority of, of what we're doing. And then we'll, we'll see what we can do in that area with that, with that steep slope and, and the monies that we have for it. I may not be able to get bike lanes all the way up, but if we don't, then we'll do Cheryl's or something. We'll figure something out, but yeah, we'll get bike facilities up Grandview or excuse me, up close. Nice. Rob, I'm sending you a big virtual hug. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Maybe My pleasure. That's, I know okay. we're trying to wrap up here, but Rob, maybe that's one question I have for you on what like sort of impacts or influence the community has on negating bike lanes. Like I'm thinking about this master plan, so to speak, on Canyon Road. Like if it's part of the plan, at what point do residents get to say, no, we don't want these and you, the, and Provo City listens to them or it's like, we're doing these anyway. Can you give me some insight onto that? <laughs> Only a portion <laughs> of the say, insight, to be honest with you. It's a ballot measure, you know? Well, <laughs> so ultimately, no. I assume the city decides. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, it, it, it is. But the, one of the difficulties, and it's not the only location that we've had it, um, where, where we've had this issue of, based off of the, the volumes on Canyon Road, um, you, you know, I know that there's some debate on how much can you have before you really need three lanes. Well, Canyon Road is high enough to where that at least in the in the general um, traffic engineering community, there's it's 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 well over the thresholds of the majority of uh, of of Canyon Road where it needs three lanes. And the width, the width that we've got on Canyon Road, if we've got three lanes, we can have bike lanes or we can have parking okay. on on a major or on, on on significant stretches. And so where it's affecting people's parking, it's basically and and. And especially on Canyon Road, there's long, there, there's some places where there's fairly long stretches where there's no side streets. And so it really affects people's ability to have people over, which I, I understand. And so that's, that's really why we're having such a big discussion of specifically about Canyon Road. Okay, it's helpful again to have the city perspective. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and to clarify, and we're going to talk about it with the community, the two locations that we're doing right now, one is south of, of 2230, where there already isn't parking on Canyon Road. And so I, I don't see that that being a, a big issue. And the other is uh, north of 4800 North, which already have its bike lanes on there. Most of that doesn't have the full road width. That one does have a lower um, volume on it to where we feel like we can keep two lanes. Um, at, after you get, you know, it, it, it's three lanes as it comes off from 4,800. So you can get the turn lane in there, but then it goes down to, to two lanes. Yeah. And so the, the two portions that we're doing right now are actually not the ones that really affect parking. It's the, okay. we sent out some letters because we were thinking, hey, if we're going to redo this, maybe it's time to do it. Strong, strong backlash. So we backed off and said, okay, we're only going to repave or, you know, we're only going to um, do things on the, on the, portions that we're repaving this next year and these are the ones that have you know basically no impact um, but we do want to discuss so that we're not getting when it comes time to repay the rest of canyon road we're not having to scan we already know you know let's let's just work through it it's already on people's mind let's work through it and figure out what we're going to do on the rest of canyon road so awesome thanks for that insight mm -hmm. all right um Sorry, I was I was distracted by a conversation. Um, uh, it sounds like that conversation wrapped up, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, Austin had to check out. He had another meeting to get to, and I think that covers everything on our agenda. Thank you for everyone for being here, and we'll see you next month, if not before. Thanks for all you do and for your participation. Thanks, Austin. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.